good afternoon year 11 apologies that i'm not there with you today i should be in the lesson tomorrow though um, but we don't want to waste this lesson we need to be revising as much as possible remember your next assessment is next friday so a week tomorrow the 21st so we need to make sure we've covered everything that's on that list so in today's lesson, I want you to do a bit of practice on quality assurance, which is um, control charts. Now, we've done these really recently and you were really good at them. So this should just be a bit of a reminder. If you want to take any notes, you can do. Or if you want to just sit and listen, anything you might have forgotten, make sure you take it all in and then there's some questions for you to have a go at. Okay. So we're going to have a quick look at control charts or quality assurance. So, statistical process control is when we have a lot of items that are being produced, so usually in a factory or on a production line. The whole point of control charts or the whole point of quality assurance is we can test regularly or check regularly the um, items that are being produced and we can see how close or far away they are from our target value, our mean. Every, ne it's never going to be the exact same value every time. That's just not possible. But we can say as long as it's within a certain range of data, that it is acceptable. So quite often in these questions, you're asked to set up or you're asked to fill in a control chart. And your control chart looks something like this, where you have a scale on this left-hand side that I've left blank at the moment. In the centre, you have your target value, which is the mean, okay? And that goes plotted on the y-axis at whatever value that is. Then we have warning limits and we have action limits. Now, sometimes these will be drawn on for you. Sometimes you'll have to calculate these. We'll look at that in a second. Then, once you've got your control chart drawn or your control chart's been given to you, you plot data. So you'd normally have a sample and you would plot that sample mean on this control chart. And depending on where that sample mean ends up, depends on what your instruction is that the company or the factory needs to do next. So if that value, that sample mean, lies in between the target value and the warning limit, whether that be above or below, so anywhere in this um, space here, then we say that's absolutely fine, we don't take any action. It's a little bit above target, a little bit below target, but perfectly acceptable. And there's nothing we need to do, we carry on as normal. If we find that it's above the warning limit, at the top or the bottom, then we say something isn't right, it's nothing to worry about, but I need to take another sample straight away. Then, if I'm back in the target value, we carry on as normal. But if we get another one outside that warning limit, we need to do something about it. Something's not right that two samples in a row are exceeding that boundary. So if it's between the warning limit and the action limit, we need to take another sample immediately. And if that new sample is outside the warning limits, then we take action. If that sample is outside the action limits, that's way too far away from the target, way too far away from the mean, we have to take action immediately. And that action, depending on what it is we're talking about, is something like stop the machine, clean the machine, fix the machine. You might be asked what action to take. So that's what you've got to be doing. You've got to stop the machine, you've got to clean it, or you've got to fix it. So you need to know that those are the three lines or the five lines on a control chart and what to do if your sample lies anywhere in that graph okay and you'll normally on the x-axis have like sample one sample two sample three and then your plot point will be plotted somewhere in between those lines so you should be able to describe what happens in each of those scenarios if it hasn't been drawn for you, if you've got to set those values yourself, then you need to know how to find those limits. Now, these formulas are not given to you in the exam. You need to know these formulas. Mu, this funny M sign here, this Greek letter Mu, is the target value. That's my mean. So whatever the mean 
of the population is, you will be told that value, that is your target value in the centre, that is the centre line. Then the warning limits are mu plus minus 2 and then this sigma sign is the standard deviation. So again they will probably tell you the standard deviation. So you're going to do the mean plus two standard deviations to give you that upper line. So that will give you this line here. So this is your mean, this is two standard deviations above and this one's two standard deviations below, so plus and minus. And then the action limit is that three standard deviations. So again, I take my mean value, I add on three standard deviations and I subtract three standard deviations. You might want to note those down. You don't get given those in the exam. You need to know them. You need to be able to describe what happens in between each of those action limits, each of those warning limits, and either side of the target value. And you need to be able to describe what control charts are used for. They are used to check the quality of the production line. Make sure the machine is working correctly. So the cover teacher should have a um, set of exam questions for you to have a practice at. I want you to work through those exam questions and then you should be able to mark that work as well because the cover teacher should be able to show you the answers to those. If there's anything that you need from this screencast, just ask the cover teacher to go back and they can pause the screen at the right part for you. I'll see you tomorrow and if there's any problems, just ask me in tomorrow's lesson.